Morning, and thank you so much for, for joining me as we begin a new week in, in the Word of God. You, you'll remember um, from our reading last week in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, where Paul, he, he gives instructions to those of us who are married, reminding us of our responsibilities to our spouse, um, even physically. He tells them to stop depriving one another. Uh, Paul says he's led by the Holy Spirit. And he reminds uh, these brethren that, that sexual immorality is prevalent, it's real. And certainly as, as husbands and wives, we, we need to recognize that and love one another enough to, to help in, in that. You know, this morning, Paul deals with the subject of divorce. And, and I don't have to tell you this. Divorce is, is commonplace in our society. It's um, really for any reason. It's common. Most are, are ignorant of the idea that God hates divorce, and certainly most are not even remotely familiar with our Lord's teaching in Matthew 19, as, as he gives but one exception for divorce, and one exception for remarriage for uh, the innocent party, and that being the sin of, of fornication. But this idea of divorce for, for any reason being acceptable, that, that's not a new development. It was a common belief peddled by many even in the first century. This morning, I want to deal with just a, a, a few verses. Um, 1 Corinthians 7, we just want to look at verses 8 uh, through 11 of this chapter. Let, let's see what uh, we can learn, be reminded of uh, this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, look with me at uh, verse 8. It says, But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, that it is good for them that they remain even as I. But, even, but if they do not have self-control, let them marry, for it's better to marry than to burn with passion. But to the married I give instructions, not I, but the Lord, that the wife should not leave her husband. Verse 11, but if she does leave, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband. And that the husband should not divorce his wife. Uh, Paul begins this section of scripture dealing with those who are not married. Um, those who are widows. Uh, another way of seeing this, I think, those who have a right to be married, uh, certainly. Uh, Paul says that it's good for them to remain even as I. Paul wasn't uh, married, um, and that's okay. <laughs> Sometimes as Christians, we need to be uh, r reminded of that. Um, but, but Paul goes on to concede that it may be necessary for some of them as a result of, of sexual desire to marry. Um, this certainly in, in keeping with what he has said previously in, in this chapter. But if you look there at, at verse 10, now he addresses those who are married. And I want you to appreciate just a couple of phrases. Paul says very simply in verse 10, the wife is not to leave her husband. I want us to appreciate Paul here. He, he's teaching exactly what Jesus taught in Matthew 19 at verse 3 uh, on this subject. I wanted to go over there for, for just a moment, if you will, over to Matthew chapter 19. And I, I just want to read just a, a few chapters. We, we won't consider the whole text this morning, but just by, by way of review, I, I want you to see that what Paul here, led by the Holy Spirit, is teaching and what Jesus taught in Matthew 19. It's the exact same thing. Matthew 19, at verse 3, some Pharisees came to Jesus testing him and asking, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason at all? And the answer is said, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they're no longer two, but one flesh. And then he says this, what therefore God has joined together, let no man uh, separate. Uh, the same thing Jesus taught, Paul led by the Holy Spirit taught. Verse 10, the wife is not to leave her husband. The latter part of verse 11, he says, the husband is not to divorce his wife. We, we see that, right? That's the rule. What God has joined together, let no man separate, Jesus said. This is for husbands, and this is for wives. And, and here's where, where people get all uh, track with this. Paul, like Jesus, he's already made clear that the husband is not to divorce his wife, and the wife is not to leave her husband. But Paul recognizes, as we do as well, while divorce is not right, it is not authorized, divorce does happen. Does it mean it's right? Does it mean that God approves of it, with the exception of Matthew 19, 9? Divorce for any reason other than the innocent of party putting their spouse away for the cause of fornication is wrong. It is sinful. Remarriage for any reason um, other than the innocent party putting their spouse away for the cause of fornication is wrong. And that's exactly what Paul says here. But 
if divorce happens, and it's not for that reason, what are a person's options and still be right with God? What pleases God in this situation? And brother, let's just be reminded, the God that we serve, the God that will judge us, he is an all-knowing, all-seeing God. He knows our hearts. If we think that we're going to play games uh, with God and we're going to outmaneuver God to get what we want or to get out of our marriage or whatever it is, um, just re be reminded um, that God knows you. He knows all of you. He knows your heart. But in saying that, recognize that Paul says you have, you have two options. You can remain unmarried or be reconciled to your husband. Uh, brethren, God hates divorce, Malachi 2 at verse 16. There is but one exception for divorce, that is fornication. The innocent party has the right to divorce their spouse for the cause of fornication, Matthew 19 verse 9. There is but one exception for remarriage, that is fornication. The innocent party has the right to remarry if they put their spouse away for the cause of fornication. Paul in no way here is advocating for divorce. He makes clear it is wrong, it is sinful, but deals here with the reality. If divorce does play place, these are your options. Remain unmarried or be reconciled to your spouse. You know, I realize a lesson like this is foreign to many. I, I realize that marriage at times is really hard as a result of, of our being sinners. But I also realize that God's way works. And here's what I'd like for us to do. Those of us who are married, husbands and wives, Take some time this week with your spouse. Spend some time in Ephesians 5. Do it together. Remind yourselves of God's way for our marriages. Certainly heed Paul's admonitions earlier in the chapter by way of safeguarding and helping one another by way of sexual desire. Brother, let's do it God's way. Thanks for joining me this morning. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, we, we are so thankful for your word. Father, for the wisdom and knowledge that it gives us. Father, we recognize that we live in, in a world that is dominated by so much sin and, and, and all things sex is, we are just bombarded with it, Father. Help us um, to understand your will. Help us to understand that your way is best. Uh, Father, bless our, our marriages. Help us as husbands to, to love our wives as Christ. Um, has shown a love for his church. Help our, our wives to respect and to love uh, their husbands. Help us to be unselfish, Father, and recognize the needs of, of one another. Father, we pray for those who have found themselves in horrific situations, who have, have, are in marriages that are not godly and, and face a number of trials and, and temptations that, that come with that. Be with them, Father. Help them to have faith. Help them to, to recognize that your way is best and to simply lean on your word, recognizing that, that, that heaven will be worth whatever sacrifices we must make here on this earth. Father, bless us all. In Jesus' name we pray.